This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show. We're back, baby. <laughs> and what's up, bro? It's been too long. Yeah, uh, it, it, I think this is going on three weeks. I just want to talk <coughs> right off the bat. And then maybe I maybe this is just a wider view on you, but is that a candle? Uh, what is that? You, yeah, that's a candle. Uh, is it's that normally uh, is that normally something you got brewing, or is this a new? No, no, I've had a candle burn every cast for ten years. It's usually just right off camera. You know what I'm saying? There we go. That's where it usually is. I had to slide in there to turn the camera on. Yeah, no, I got a whole little side. My side to my right is like the nightstand that you talk about your wife having on the last special. <laughs> I can't even tell you what's going on over here. Well, could you, could you, you describe for, to get into. what? D- describe describe to the listeners yeah. what you have on your side table. Like what's over there? All right. All right. Well, we got the candle that we discussed. Then we got um <clears throat> I know you don't like to discuss this. Solar recovery. I get a little spritz, brings my face alive. If I ever get to do Fox and Friends in the morning, I'm bringing a bottle of this. I know they're going to love it. Um, then I got uh, from a dear friend of ours, a fan of the cast out of uh, Chicago, sends me to Citrus citrus Magic. Um, what does that do? It's a, it's a spray for the... Oh. For the uh, it's a spray for the... Um, for the extracurriculars? Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blanking on names right now. Shit, jeez. What's his name? He's a good guy. He taught me we email all the time. He's gonna he's gonna be upset if I don't know his name. I gotta say it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm getting a little nervous, bro, lately, because I'm forgetting names. Oh bro, we gotta I, get go into to... this. We gotta get into this because I'm having the same problem and I was talking to my buddy George back home. Ken, uh, Kenny the... fin- Kenny Finnegan out of Chicago. Love this guy. Real nice guy. I'm sorry. He sent me this stuff. But go ahead, right, bro? Is it get? Is it age? What's going on? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I'm like, I can't. The recall, something's wrong. Like I can't recall names. I can't recall things uh, that I read. It's uh, it's it's more so names of people and like I forgot. I forgot Nicki Minaj's name. But but. The, you bringing up a good point though. This the, the the star Nicki Minaj, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm finding though the names that I'm forgetting. They're forgettable. <laughs> yeah, I feel like my brain is saying we can't. My brain on its own is like cleaning out the attic. He's like, you haven't said this fucking name in ten years. It's gone. It's out of your memory. You know, it's like doing its own dec- deciding making of. So like like I, the play is in your life, you know what I'm saying? Like you you know Pete, you know me, you know friends, family, you know what I'm saying? It's the it's this the shadow people on the edge of the shadow. I'm like what the guy? What was your name? We had a moment. We drank together like ten years ago. I can't you know. But like so I don't know what's um like or even movies. I remember the ones I loved. I'm starting to not remember the ones that sucked as well. Okay. The guy you just mentioned, right? What's his name? Ken Finnegan. Okay. Yeah. I forgot his name already. Bro, there was no. This I almost didn't be able to say it to you again a second time myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Kenny. But yeah, there's no. Re- your brain is taking that in, going. Well, it's like a huge computer. I feel, and your brain as a computer is taking in how you're feeling about what you're hearing. And based on how you're feeling, your brain goes to eat to its other people working in its brain. You don't give a fuck about this name. We're full. <laughs> There's no more room. Throw it out the back. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying at this age, we have populated our brain with so much mm-hmm. information right. that yeah. it's now filing the important information up top and then like losing the files that we haven't opened for 10 to 20 years. Right. And and to prove my point, you have yet to run into an old friend who has forgotten your name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're always deep in everybody's file. 
So, you know, I mean, listen, I'm putting us on the spot because the next time we don't remember someone's name, they're going to know where they stand. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's almost like I told you one time a while back, I start to hear songs on the radio that I don't, you know, from the past. A song will come up and I'll be like, and I'll make a decision in my head. I'm like, I wouldn't care if I never heard that song again in my life. You know, I don't even hate it, but I'd rather hear another song instead. Like, so, and I feel like our brain is doing that on its own. I don't want to get too heavy. I don't think I'm exercising my brain enough, meaning I don't think I'm reading enough. I don't think I'm stimulating the brain with problems and what have you. And I think like anything else, you don't work out your biceps. The biceps, are, you're not going to see any you know, definition mm -hmm. and progress. And that's where I am right now with remembering things. I mean, it's like I'm sitting there going, what, the, what was it? What was it? I can't even remember. Here's another thing. I don't know if you're having this problem. I'll have a story, right? And I don't know if you yeah. do this, but I'll have a story. Let's say something that happened to me this week, and I'll tell my mom. I'll tell my wife. I'll tell my sister. I'm, I can't even remember if I told them the story or not. Do you ever have this problem? Like, you have a story and you tell multiple right. no, people? I know what you're saying. Yeah, no, I'm usually pretty good about never repeating the story to someone I haven't told. But you've done that to me, and uh, that's when, when I. By the way, I have to do a side note. I was half kidding about remembering people, and right, yo, know, I thought you'd go along and have more fun with that. You're in a mood, but anyway. Yeah, you are. No, no. You're not you guy. You're not you guy. You're not you right what now. What do you mean, not you? What? Because I didn't agree. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, you don't have to agree with that. You just, you know, you, you seem a little uh, more serious here. We're going. Uh, you know, a little, a little more low key right now. That's all I'm saying. You don't seem your perky self. That's all. All right, now you're coming to life. All right. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. But uh, so wait, now I'm losing my train of thought. So I had to do that. Uh, you side forgot. Note. There you go. You right, forgot what yeah. the fuck you were even talking about. Yeah, I did. I did. Right. But I did. I did mean that. I was only half kidding about that. But as far as. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, bro. You're not what? half kidding. What happened was, what were you just looking at? You were looking down, you were looking, the, what the fuck yeah, is that? I, you're here, you're on a computer down here. Oh, okay, so for okay. So for a second I was just looking at you down there, it was weird, oh. I don't normally do that. <laughs> Wait, was I busted? Is that what you're going to say? Some... Guys, ever pull into the driveway after a trip to the grocery store only to realize you forgot that one key ingredient for dinner? Now you have options. Get the groceries you need or a backup meal from your favorite local restaurant delivered with DoorDash, baby. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour, people. What do you think of that, Pete? I think it's unbelievable. And every time you place an order for a pickup or delivery, you're setting off a chain reaction that helps give back to the people who make your neighborhood unique. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood Go to's or choose your favorite national restaurants like Popeyes, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. So, anyway, with DoorDash, you're not just getting the things you love, but you're supporting the community. You know what, Pete? With the DoorDash, I gotta, I gotta admit, me personally, I can't stand going to the grocery store, sifting through the items. Then you got to get in line. You get aggravated because everybody in the line either doesn't have the right coupon, the right payment. Uh -huh. There's always an issue, a price check, what have you. DoorDash eliminates all the frustrations of shopping. And while you're spending time with your beautiful family, you got a DoorDash person going out doing everything for you from the stores and the restaurants to the dashers driving around each purchase provides a new opportunity for everyone involved because with doordash there is a neighborhood of good in every order and for a limited time all listeners can get 50 percent off up to a 20 dollar value and no dollar delivery fees when you download the doordash app and enter the cast that's the code 
the cast. That's 50% off up to a $20 value and zero charge for delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and you enter the code the cast. Don't forget that code the cast for 50% off up to a $20 value and zero delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. I don't think you were half kidding. What I think just happened here is yeah. you went full bore with that thing. I didn't yeah. jump on with it. And then right. you felt bad that I didn't jump on with it. And now you're feeling like you were in a spotlight. And you're like, no, no, no. I don't really feel that way uh, just because I didn't agree with it or I didn't hop on to that. I, is that is that, a, is that a quick analysis on how you <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely. Yeah, first part was right. I was definitely full bore. Kind of still believe that. But then I, when I said to you, um, sometimes that now I'm putting myself out there. If I don't remember someone's name, they're gonna think because they don't matter to me. I, I started to feel a little bad about that comment. Oh, yeah, uh, no, don't yeah. worry about that. So bro. yeah, don't no, bro, you, you're almost never with me, man. I don't mind that. I mean, <laughs> we disagree about a lot of stuff. That's the fun of it. But how could you say you're not working your brain enough? When you're doing all these things in your life from running a business, being yourself, <clears throat> creating all this content, I mean, I, I mean, what are you not, you're not doing Sudoku or Suduki or whatever the fuck they play? <laughs> <laughs> could be some of that, could be some of that, but also, um, my sister's been doing some editing for me uh, where, you know, with, with podcasts and whatnot, and she goes, the way you speak is so not grammatically correct she basically told me i speak like i dropped out of school in fifth grade my word choice how i put words together my uh my whole vocabulary it's 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 like a, it's like a 1920s dock worker bro what's your take my take is that would be like going up to Michael Jackson in the prime of his career and saying, you sound like a girl when you sing. That's meaning <clears throat> Michael Jackson and his high voice <clears throat> is all what made him appealing and famous and we loved him. Your way, uh, way with words, it's, it's part of who you are. It's part of the character. I, no one thinks you're dumb. I, I see as a sister the concern, but... Um, <laughs> You know, that, that's half of what we're laughing at. And we're not laughing at you. We're laughing at the way you word it, the way you, like, go, you know, run it through the garden or you'll, you'll take a phrase and say it. At, I think you're being, you know. It's not even that, bro. It's not running through the garden. I'm talking about oh, right, right. using the correct, right. you know, adjectives, just sentence structure in general. Right. Like, like right. here, would you right. would have. Remember that? Yeah. Would you would have. Yeah. I love that. I love the flow of that. <laughs> Yeah, would you would have? I mean, you know, it's like. Would you would have? Say, say had, it, how 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 should you normally say that? See, Instead of so, would you would have. What, what's it supposed to be? Would you like? Would you care? Right, I'll, you, go, I'll use you, it in a would, sentence. Okay. I'll use it in a sentence. Would you would have had steak or chicken? Given the choice, like you got. Yeah, that, that, if you're gonna, if you're gonna yeah. use a sentence, can you finish the yeah. sentence? Because <laughs> that was a question. <laughs> it's it's so dumb that you can't even like you can't even like put that into I don't even know how the hell you would say it because I've been saying would you would have probably since I've been 18. How right. would you say that? Well, it depends. You're almost saying it like neither was offered to the person. Um but if it had been, would you would have gotten the chicken or the steak? No, like, you, you, you just said, would you would have gotten. That's even worse. You just threw a gotten in there on on top of my. <laughs> I, I think it needs a gotten. I mean, I, 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 I do, because otherwise, would you would have gotten the chicken or the fish <laughs> had you had the choice? I mean, no. I don't know what you're trying to say. Oh, wait. Would you would have is not, it's not the right. That's what I'm saying. Would you would have is not right. Can you give me the context in how you're asking this person something? Like, are you telling them a story about a place you were and you went with the fish? 
instead of the chicken, and you're asking them if they were at your situation and they were at that wedding, would they have gotten the chicken or the fish? Is that what you're... What's the context of the would you would have gotten the chicken or the fish? Okay, the the would you would have is is almost like um, it's like uh, man, it it's like would you would have would you would have had would you would have had would you would have I don't know I'm trying to figure out like. <laughs> I don't know where where the hell I would use this. I know I've just used it in a in, in a scenario. Like, would right. you would have uh, went to, you know, uh, I guess it's like either or. I know how you've used it. Like, you'd go like, would you have rather had me drive off? You know, like something like that. Like, you know, like if you're telling a story and you go, I so I got out and I got in a fight with the guy. But I mean, I don't know. Would you would have would you would have had me? Like yeah, that? would you would have? Yeah, would you would have? I, I don't know. Is would so you would have so bad? Is what it, would, would you would you would have rather? I don't I, yeah, I don't know that it's so bad, bro. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I think yeah. uh uh we we'll, 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 we'll leave it to the listeners to correct would you would have in the comments uh yeah. cuz we're, yeah. we're it's like two dummies here trying to figure it out. Um, Jackie does that with my writing though, like I try to write a newsletter or something. She's like you write like a you know, dummy uh, and then she like re if she reads something, she's like, this is how it should sound. And I'm like, but I don't, that's not how I sound. I want it to reflect how I speak. You know what I yeah. mean? I don't know. Anyway. Sometimes don't be just how we speak and how you write are two different things. Uh, well, put it this way. If I were to write something in, let's say the book. Yeah. I wrote a book, but I co-wrote it with a, a ghostwriter. And I go, I don't want you to correct a lot of what I say because a lot of what I say is how I speak and that's kind of what makes it unique or funny or, or what have you. As soon as you start correcting would you would have, it ain't going to be funny, right? By the way, right. has ain't, is, is, did they throw ain't into the dictionary yet? Because I know like Patrick. growing up, yeah, go throw uh, Patrick. See if "ain't" is 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 one of uh, the Webster's uh, words. "Ain't" growing up was like taboo. Can't say "ain't," right? Yeah. But yeah. I think I think I might have heard something that they threw "ain't" into the dictionary like six or seven years ago, just based on popular demand. You know, I, know. I, I think everybody yeah. was saying that they were like, like throw this word in there. We we. It's like Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame, you know? <laughs> just don't let that word in. Do not let that <laughs> word in. It's like, come on, guy. Everybody's saying it. It's all <sighs> over. It's signing balls at malls all over the country. Just let ain't in. <laughs> yeah, I hate bro. I use it, too. Remember growing up, ain't isn't a word. That's what yeah. our teachers would always say to us, you know? Yeah. The other one um, for me, too, is like if I was had any say with the English language, I'd be like, can, can we all get over the taboo with the F-bomb, with the word fuck? I mean, it's just, you know, you, you could you could say it on, I say it on stage, but I'm not talking about something dirty. Like, I'm like, I could go like, oh, I was freezing. I mean, I was fucking freezing, you know? And like, somehow, you're dirty. It's like, from a word? From a, a sound? I don't know. It is in the dictionary, um, and... It made it. Boom. It, it made it in there, although widely disapproved as non-standard and more common in the habitual speech of the less educated, ain't is flourishing in American English. It is used in both speech and writing to catch attention and gain emphasis. Yeah, but you is heard it? that one line there about uneducated. Uneducated, yeah. Nah. No, it's, it's, a, it's a word for dummies. It's a dummy word. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you could be a dummy and then you go and you memorize the dictionary. So you're still a dummy, but you're using big words. Does that does that automatically make you not a dummy because you know all those words? Uh, well, if you know all those, if you know all those words and know how to use them, I, I've been around people who use big words. Actually, a friend of mine, Brett Paul, he he's a, a magician with words. This guy, and I'm going to see him Saturday night. I can't I can't wait to see this guy. Because I can't wait to hear him speak. 
yeah. he's throwing out words that I know what they mean in context because, you know, the way he th- structures the sentence, I go, oh, wow, I know that word, what it means, because I could put it together based on the other words around it, right? Right, 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 right. But the trick is taking that word, putting it into your brain, and then regurgitating that when the time is right. Because yeah. if you really look at it, I don't, you know, I mean, again, I don't, sorry to get serious. Um, When you're speaking, yeah, it's really remarkable because, like, remarkable. How did I? How did I? How did I take that word? I haven't even used remarkable. I'm like, I'm not kidding. Okay. Probably grade school. Okay, now I'll give you an example right there. You know, it's probably since grade school, but you go probably because it's funnier. Boom, and that's why. Yeah, that's 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 why you do what you do. It's the career. The, the the way you say words could be funny, but what I am saying is, for me to pick up remarkable uh-huh. without even thinking, like I don't know, I didn't think I was going to say remarkable. I don't even know right now the words that are coming out of my mouth. Yeah, they're just coming. Oh my god, bro! You, right? you, you literally sound like a guy who just woke up from a coma. I mean. <laughs> What? I'm just saying. Yeah, you've been doing this since you were fucking three, guy. I, now you're amazing. I know, but, but what I'm saying is, how the hell did I sift out remarkable when I haven't said that word in 40 years? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it yeah. just came in. Yeah, you have said remarkable in 40 years. If you haven't said it, it's always been on your radar. It's never like you're not, you don't know that word. It's just, it doesn't fit, like, your your identity. Your persona, you know what I mean? You're never like, you would, You know, you're not going to be 25 year old and, you know, how was uh, just a Silence Little Lamb? Oh, it was remarkable. What? Like, hey, what the fuck? But you know the word. Maybe you're using it now like a tweed jacket, you know what I mean? You're getting older and it fits you more now. That's what I'm saying. I want to start incorporating a little ah, bit more dig it. vocabulary. Maybe that A, I haven't said in a while, or B, that's new to me. That I can right. start implementing into conversations where people go, Jesus Christ, where'd that word come from? I've been in conversations yeah. with people going, geez, what a beautiful word. Like in my head, I'm like, that's a beautiful word. And, and not only that, you're talking to someone like, yeah, you know, I was talking to someone once and you got him at a level he is, how, you know, they're cool, whatever you feel about him. And then he's like, I was flummoxed. I'm like, whoa. He just went up here, guy. Flummoxed. Who belts that word out anymore? That's what I'm saying. And you start. You, yeah, it's like a nice piece of clothing, man. You use big <laughs> words, and people start to think you're a big shot. <laughs> <laughs> My um, problem is I know a lot of words. I feel a pretty good vocabulary, and I'm into words. But I, as we know through years on the cast, I don't pronounce them all right, but I say them with confidence. I know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the, that's, that's the, the, the commitment right. that you have to wrong words is unparalleled. I've never seen anyone say Even, wrong words as confident as you. What I said earlier on the show, Sudoku or whatever, I knew going in with the yes that I didn't know the full pronunciation, but I just jumped off. I'm like, Sudoku, Sudoku. Because I know that you'll know what I was talking about, and that's good enough, man. You know? <laughs> so... So just thumb uh, through a dictionary, man. You know, just thumb through it, peruse through it when you got nothing going on. Nah, Peru- nah peruse. Yeah, by the way, it's it's not that. It's not it's not thumbing through a dictionary. I don't think you're gonna pick up words thumbing through a dictionary. You know, I'm gonna think you're gonna pick up words is you start hanging out with people who are educated and know how to use words in the correct manner. That's the only way you're gonna pick up words i mean you could you could pick up a book you could listen to words yeah but i i think if you start hanging out with people who are highly educated it's almost like it's rubbing off you know yeah yeah no there's something to be said for that i hear you know you all of a sudden you, you don't feel comfortable throwing around an ain't when these people are using words like apropos you know <laughs> apropos 
Well, we uh, look forward to hearing the words. So. Omaha Steaks, people, is America's original butcher since 1917 and a holiday gift that's guaranteed to be loved. Now, the holidays are here. Achieve gifting greatness when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender, delicious Omaha steaks. Right, Pete? That's right. The steak experts at Omaha Steaks have put together special curated gift packages to help you take the guesswork out of gifting and make you a holiday hero. I did it. I sent my brother-in-law a couple of steaks. He sent me a photograph of the Styrofoam Omaha Steak styrofoam cooler and he said thank you for our soon to be Christmas dinner. Oh! I changed the Christmas menu! (laughs) So go to OmahaSteaks.com and take advantage of 50% off site-wide. Plus you gotta use the code THECAST at checkout to get an additional $30 off your order. Send an assortment of mouth-watering favorites guaranteed to impress the legendary butcher's cut filet mignon, air-chilled boneless chicken, ultra-juicy burgers, and get this, people, an even easy-to-prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. Omaha Steaks is ready to ship your order right away, so shop early and beat the shipping rush. Go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code THECAST at checkout. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com, 50% off site-wide, plus use promo code THECAST at checkout to get that extra $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. Anyway, not to change the subject, I fucking love the special, baby. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks, man. You know, listen. What? I appreciate it. Um, Here's the thing with the special. Um... And I generally don't look at comments and whatnot. I mean, I know we've talked about this on the cast about people who comment on our podcast and then we'll bring that up here and discuss it. Yeah. Uh, Generally speaking, though, I don't respond to comments. I don't give them any weight. But in this particular special, a lot of the comments were kind of the same comments like people were disappointed they thought other specials were better than this special uh i got some and i and i had this issue in the in the in post-production the special came back and it looked like i had lipstick on my lips look like bright red and i go what the fuck's with the lips the lips look like i got makeup on like heavy makeup I go, we need to correct that. So we went through a series of color correction, and I thought we had had it to a place not perfect, but enough where it's like, okay. But then it came out, and and again, I got something like, what do you got, fucking lipstick on? What what are you doing with the makeup and whatnot? Which the makeup wasn't a a heavy applicant of of makeup. So, by the way, applicant is another word. I I mean, come on. Um, So... Pro, is it, Patrick, I'm sorry to bother you. Can we see if the applicant was just used in the correct way? <laughs> I'm not so sure it was. <laughs> no, application. I just, yeah. I just shortened it, though. What? <laughs> this is fucking great. All right. Uh, oh, God. Uh, uh, so, anyway, and... Yeah. Oh, small yeah. application of makeup. Application, yeah, of makeup. application yeah. of makeup. Anyway, uh, also some of the, and of course, I don't look at any of the positive reviews. You know, I, I just, I, I just look at you know what, what negative. But yeah, I just no, thought I, there's a, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do in life, though. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always looking at the negative side, never the positive. Right, right. 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 Always looking about what I don't to- have, not what I have. Right, I hear you, man. Crowd of people so, laughing. One guy in the corner, not. That's the guy you want to talk to after the show. <laughs> I talk to him during the show. Going, why? Ain't, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, so, um, 
did I tell you I did that one? Jesus, this was a story. Man, talk about a memory. Forgot that story. Just forgot it. it just, I think it happened at the Laugh Factory. Was it? Was it? Oh, yeah. No. Doesn't pertain to this conversation. Anyway, in as a whole, oh, uh, another, another one of the critiques were... Um, wasn't physical normally I'm, I'm more physical in my comedy i just i, I wasn't yeah. as physical as i normally am so I, I i was hearing comments but the way i was hearing the comments and the critiques were the same you know it'd be like the equivalent of you running a restaurant and you you're sending out the steak and there's the same complaint about the steak nine times you know what i'm saying like it's it's tough or it's not cooked right, you know. That's I was. Uh, if you were to give an equivalent of a, of a business, that's kind of what I was hearing on and on. So I'm like, all right, maybe. And I wasn't getting that response really on tour. I mean, I was using the same material on tour, and and I was getting a a great response from it. But as soon as I put it on film, you know, and, and I don't know if, if it's because that. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know what why the negative feedback that it was abundant uh, like i told you on the text i i just read a couple of review reviews i didn't read social media and they were all positive i thought it was great the only thing that i found interesting which first of all this so many aspects to this number one take again just let's take michael jackson you loved this guy growing up he puts out all these albums the way i love billy joel it's just human nature. Eventually, you're going to like one more than the next, then the next one more than you could. You, I never thought I could love it as much as that last one. Then that one, he tried to. It's like you're an artist. And I think uh, I love the reviews I saw were given such kudos to just, just doing something new out of the box, like a musician going, we're unplugging this time, or we're going, you know. I, I love that. And I think it was done successfully the thing that fascinated me though which i didn't even take into consideration was the minute you put on a tux like if i ever wore a tux the minute i put it on i'd start my act i'd go oh my god there's like seven things that i just can't say in a tux that <laughs> that, that i normally say right i just feel like the, the tux you know so like and the only one with you is when you go it was so great you did this that great and by the way I saw this stuff too, crushing all the time. So was, of course it's going to crush again. But the great bit up front about you and Lana um, and being late and stuff like that. And then she's in the heels. When you go, when, she, when you go, uh, she goes, do I look sexy? You go, yeah, I'm getting a boner. I'm like, boner in a tuxedo is jolting. Joe. <laughs> It, it 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 Joe, where the hell did that come from? Joe. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> now I'm getting called names, but not my own. Holy shit. <laughs> you need this vacation, bro. Just grab oh, an eggnog man. and light a fire, please. Oh speaking of eggnog, we gotta get into that. That's that party's Saturday. Love the Fallon sit down. I thought that was beautiful, man. I really thought oh, that was just really great, man. I love that we would <laughs> me and Jackie were laughing out loud about and the the way you worded it with the uh I don't like when people make something at their home and then bring it to my home. <laughs> and then the way the whole thing with the family recipe. And I don't think I think they were laughing when you did the family you did that bit. And then right after that bit, Sebastian, if you watch his found bit, he's talking about people bringing food for Thanksgiving and then how they say it's a family recipe. Very next thing, Fallon says something like, What are you doing? You go, I'm making an eggnog. I think some of them laughed. Because they knew it's a family recipe. You just ripped on a family recipe. And your next bit is about making a family recipe for people. I thought that was great. <laughs> I looked at Jack and I go, he's doing a bit of... So anyway, <laughs> and that was all great. You're like, that is 65. I don't know. It's, it, you make, it was great. It was great, dude. Oh, I thanks, think you thanks. just need to just sit back, take a breath of fresh air, appreciate the things you've done for a half a second. I, I I agree, and this break is coming at at a great time. I'm so <sighs> happy that I'm not touring off this special. I need to go and reconnect with my kids, reconnect with Lana. Just just futz around around the house. I got to get into this story. I know it's off topic of the special, but 
No problem. Oh, we're all over. Go ahead. I went for the Christmas tree yesterday. All right. It's a it's a Christmas tree uh, place that we've never been to before. Normally, we go to this Christmas tree place, but they move. They move further away from our house. But So we're like, let's try this place in the valley. So we go in the valley. Pull up. And from the outside, I go, oh, this is beautiful. Because we before we went to this place, we went to a church parking lot. And I, right, as soon as I heard church parking lot, I go, this selection's got to be minimal. <laughs> right, right. right. We yeah. pull in, we pull in, and it's like, you ever go to a tree lot and and you go, is this like a tree lot or is this just like a, there was just no like, a, you know, normally they have like, like the lights and, and it's like maybe a little yeah. tent. This yeah. was like a few trees and a desk. Oh, right. So we 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 saw that and went right through. You know, didn't even get right. out of the car. So there was like no. It, was this the one that was at the church? Yeah. Right. So it was probably somebody donated a few trees to the church, so the church can make a few bucks. Every light the church puts up is a little money out of the pocket of the church. So. And I hear you. You gotta have the magical little Christmas music playing, some lights there. Maybe, maybe uh, you know they got the wreaths off to the side. You want to buy one of those? Maybe even the guy who works there is you know wearing a Christmas hat. Come on, I hear you. Yeah, where'd you go? I'm looking. F- I went to this, this, uh, this, this tree lot behind the. I don't even know where it was. It was a big parking lot, but the but the presentation was stellar. As I parked the car, I just saw. A candy cane tent, you know, white, red, white. Oh, I'm like, this is. You're at the right place. You're at the right place. I'm at the right place. Everybody (sighs) there dressed up had red in red, you know, they had red, some some had Santa hats. Right. We walk in an abundance of trees. I mean, from little trees to, you know, 19 feet. I like the range. That's what I'm looking for in a Christmas tree lot. Range of feet, right? right. You could get yeah. a two foot tree. You could get a 19 foot tree, and everything in between. Now, yeah. we wanted a 10 foot tree, all right? So we go into the 10 foot aisle. This guy comes out of nowhere. I mean, bro, this guy could have been an elf at the North Pole. That's t- really. Really? This is how accommodating this guy was. He's like, what's going on, guys? What can I get you? What are you looking at? You know, just right off the bat. Just I go, this right, guy's great. Right. This guy's getting a 50. Right. This guy's getting a 50 spot. And we're going to go up from there. We're starting at 50 on the tip. Just just, just for the greeting, the guy got Just for the greeting alone. <laughs> so Lana, very particular about Christmas trees. I'm not so much particular. I, I, I mean, I look at it and go, okay, this is great. Right. Lana, you know, she's got to go. She's got to go and feel the texture of the tree and look at the tree's branches to see if they will be able to hold the ornaments that we have selected, right? So she's a little bit more picky about it. But this guy is like, he's he's in short sleeves and he's taking trees and manhandling the tree. Now, if I was working at a tree lot, I'm covered. Uh, you don't see my skin. I got gloves no. on, long sleeves. I got like a hat. This guy is in there, and he's shaking trees out. There's sap all over this guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? Wow. Yeah. But he's happier than shit. This guy could not be... More. He's like, I got extra trees in the back. If you don't like anything here, I'll bring them out for you. That's all Lana oh, had here. Yeah, bring them oh, out. Bring them out. This guy right. goes in the back and he sweat like they they dresses. This guy's getting a hernia, <laughs> looking looking at fucking tree trunks like Paul Bunyan. She's like, can you spin it around? A fucking fitting room at Bloomingdale's. <laughs> <laughs> But this guy don't care. He works three weeks a year. He he, scrub, he soaks in a tub to get the sap off, and then he goes back to a small town and drinks all of his tree money till next year. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. So 
He goes back to get another tree. And this yeah. is this is the beauty of this place. They got their own lingo they use between the workers. Yeah. This guy's coming out with a tree, right? When the when when the tree comes out, it's it's tied. So it's it looks like a big, you know, like looks like a log almost because it's it's right. wrapped right yeah yeah so yeah. this guy's got it on his shoulder another guy's coming out from around the corner and i heard tree traffic tree oh. traffic oh, oh tree traffic <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> oh god i think that's got to be you know to let you know we're coming high is a tree up high i love it man. oh man i heard that and i'm like oh this is it oh. that's it so he brings it out and he cuts it down the yeah. center right and yeah. the tree just it, it's like it's like taking off a woman's bra uh huh it the shit <laughs> just Bro, it's like a movie when you when when you see a woman's uh, robe come off, she just drops it to the floor, and you see her back, and you're like, "Oh, it is go time." <laughs> Even a tree, don't you feel like the trees all bundled up as the scissors cut, and the trees thinking, "Oh, they gotta love this. <laughs> they gotta love this." The trees going three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, man, in L.A., if I was running a, th a, 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 a criminal business, I'd hire a bunch of guys to go to a tree place like that and follow any customer that buys a tree over 10 feet or bigger, <laughs> follow them home with case in the house. Jeez. Anyone who can fit a tree over 10 feet has got a safe. We're in that tree. Let's get, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Someone comes with a 19-foot tree, follow that. That's going to Spielberg's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Put, put it this way, you know, the the tree we bought, we couldn't even fit it if we wanted to on any car we own. You know, like a lot of the, a lot of the trees yeah. you strap it to the to the to the top, right? This sure. thing this this thing we had to bring in, you know, like a, a friend of ours, not a friend, a, a guy that we we know that sometimes works for us has like a a, a huge truck. So he had to bring yeah. this truck to pick this thing up, but Beautiful. Let, let me let me get to this thing opens up and right away it's like it, the way it opened up I, I said that's it that's the tree he didn't even shake oh. the thing out yet I just knew it from it being unveiled it just it beautiful 10 feet but you know no holes in it you know sometimes the, the, right. the tree don't the tree look like it got beat up you know like one side is screwed up. This was beautiful all the way around. So I said, "Do you know? Do you know?" Okay, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Do, do you I know, know where what? the tree came from? Like, was it a Vermont, Montana? Any idea? No. Canada? no. Well, I don't know where it came from. I know it's a and the kind is a noble, a noble Christmas tree. I think there's another one that starts with an F. Again, there's a memory. Uh, I think it's a fir. Uh, f is it fir? Yeah, F I R fir. Wow. Uh, this one was noble. So we go, let's take that. He goes, if, if you don't like this, if, you, if you're not 100% happy with this, I could go get more trees. This guy was ready to go get more trees, bro. Wow. Yeah. And he goes, do you want the stand on it? I said, oh, okay. Yeah. Don't come with it. He goes, no, we, we have to put one on. So I got video of this. I'll put it up on Patreon. This guy, bro, it's like Paul Bunyan. He, he was hammering in the uh the stand but like this 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 ain't you know this this is hard labor yeah so i'm looking at this kid going is he from la because you don't normally see this type of work ethic in los angeles <laughs> you know sometimes some of these tree places they come from like you said oregon down with like yeah. people yeah, from yeah. the hills right and yeah. then they set up shop in los angeles and you know it's it's time to make. That's another thing. What are these tree people doing the rest of the year? Right. What are they doing? Oh, they live. Don't they live in campus when they come to the tree? When they do the trees, like in New York City, they live in a camper right there. They sell yeah. the trees, bro. They where they live. It's like a dollar for a beer. 
the house is like their rent is three hundred. They live in the middle of nowhere. They, I'm telling you, they drink through the winter, watch the trees grow, and uh, then they go sell them again. Okay. I mean, what do they so, do? They, they go home and they go back to working on Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> so, ten feet. How much you think the tree is? In L.A., with all the bells and whistles you got. I, it's a guess. I just know it's a lot. <clears throat> I'm guessing. I'm guessing you you paid close to at least seven fifty, seven hundred fifty bucks. <sighs> Two ninety five. What for the stand, the service, the tree, all for two ninety five. Two ninety five. Now, at this that other place we used to go to, it was bargain. double that. It was six hundred at this other place that we used to go to, and I don't know what the hell they're doing with their trees. I think, right. you know, because of the location, they set yeah. up near Beverly Hills. So yeah. these people ain't stupid. They're like, "Yeah, hey, these people got money. Let's jack up the shit six hundred. They'll buy it. They don't know shit." Right. This right. in the valley, two ninety five out the door. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we go to pay. And we got two little trees. We got like a little winter wonderland downstairs for the kids that we put a little reindeer and whatnot. So we got two little trees to put in there, right? So two trees. And then we got some tree food. You know, we put in the thing. I guess they got a, it's like a special, whatever, food for the tree. Yeah. And then they had like some spray paint, the snow spray paint that you sprayed on the window. So we got that all in $452, right? Yeah. I pay cash for seventy. Now she's ringing the stuff up on a calculator. It's taking a while. Though. I don't know what she's doing. She goes, "Here's your change: hundred and thirteen dollars and whatever fifty. So hundred thirteen dollars. I I gave you four seventy. It's four fifty two. I'm supposed to get like eighteen dollars back. She gives me a hundred thirteen. Right." Would you say anything, or do you pocket the money and get the hell out of there? What would you do? Oh, I, de- I definitely say something. Yeah, I definitely say something. All right. You I did too, sure. I, gave, I said you gave me too much money back. I gave you 470 it's 452 Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, all right. And then she said, no, thank you. You know, thank you. <sighs> Was disappointed with the I just I just saved you your job. <laughs> right? Like at the end of the at the end of the night, you're gonna be short on the register. And there could right. be there could be, you know, a discussion. Are you are you skimming? What's where's the hundred well, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. I kinda, well, I kind I kind of got like a like a thank you that you would say for someone maybe holding the door for you, you know, open right. for you as you walk. In. I know. Thank you. I know what you're saying. Okay, I've had this happen to me where I've given wrong change when I was waiting tables, and someone said, "Hey, man, you gave me," you gave me and I would go, "Oh, man." Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate that, man. Thank yeah. God. Over my head. And I was like, this, I was like, eh, you got to give me a little bit more thank you on that. No. I, I, I couldn't agree more. One time at Walmart, a couple months back, I bought a bunch of stuff, and they didn't ring me up for my Nicorette, which is like 26 bucks, and I'm out in the parking lot, and I'm like, ah, oh, they never rang me up for this. I go back in. Oh, and- I go, you didn't ring me up for this. And the lady goes, oh, you have to go to the return counter. I go, I'm not returning anything. You didn't ring me up. Well, you go you go and tell them. So I go to tell them, and they go, oh, 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 okay. Well, just go over there and ring up. Nobody had. I was so pissed. I was so pissed that I didn't just keep it. But the only difference with my story, your story, is the only reason I brought it in is because I got a little freaked out in my head. I'm like, this is a test. Cop's gonna knock on my door when I get home because I paid for everything else with credit card, and they got the camera. And like, you didn't pay for the Nicorette, cough them up. I'm like, and in my town, they put you in the paper for anything. You get a DWI or something, you're in the fucking paper. My mother-in-law lives here. 
<laughs> but I know what you're saying, right? They should be like, holy shit, dude. Oh, my God. I'm such an idiot. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I mean, so many other people would just leave. I really appreciate, you know. Now, the flip side is trees are negotiable. Everything's in cash. I don't think they keep them tight enough count to know. My concern is if this chick did this with you, is she doing this all day? I'd go up to the boss and be like, hey, you're lucky if you got enough gas money to get back to Oregon because you got a slug working your register. <laughs> all right? <laughs> she, I mean, she's giving out money for trees. She's giving out money, guys. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> So yeah, I was yeah. I was I was kind of taken aback by the lack of, of enthusiasm on the on the mistake. Absolutely, absolutely. Me too. I I disagree with that. You got to get hopped up. You got to be excited for that. Yeah. So that like otherwise, cool. what's the point? Listen, I just, yeah, was, was, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. For, you're all over the map. What, what's 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 no, going on? Well, Christmas. Did you? Uh, I want to. I, I need it. I. When you shop for Lana, when you get Christmas gifts for Lana, like, I had to ask you how you go about it because, I mean, my my best gift right now for Jackie, I've, like, gotten gifts for her and stuff. My, my like, home run gift is a toilet seat warmer. So I'm like, Bro. yeah, okay, yeah. Wow. I, I could tell you the list of things I got going for her. Another thing I got was two really nice double size oh uh, no i'm sorry they're twin xl size uh duvet covers because i looked it up a, a duvet goose down and the covers because i looked it up online and the twin xl two of them together is equal to a king bed right they would lay the same way a king bed would and it's huge in sweden and apparently it's been saving marriages but you sleep in the same bed, but you have separate comforters and sheets, top sheets. So when one rolls over, they ain't moving the thing from the other. So I, I bought two comforters and two duvet covers, seat warmer, pair of Skechers slip-ons, fucking a t-shirt from her college, and uh, bro, yeah, I'm, 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 uh, whew. Listen, I need I need a big gift. What What do you got? <laughs> Number one, I don't got anything yet. I haven't even thought about it, to be honest with Whoa. you. Wow. I, I gotta get on. I gotta get on my my horse on that. Uh, what my suggestion here, and I don't even know if you could do this. Return everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. This is. <laughs> Yeah. I say return everything and get one nice gift rather than this this multiple bullshit you're going with. Uh the this the toilet seat warmer. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that's like a purchase in May. You know, like May. Yeah, like wait, wait. like that's just like in the in the that's not like a gift. That's like I'm oh, gonna get right, that right. seat warmer for the toilet today. You know, like, that's right. like an errand. Right, right, no. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is the deal. I don't want to hear this, but every night and, and, and when she goes to bed and she uses the bathroom in our bedroom, and in the morning, she always is like, oh, my God, it's so cold. It drives me nuts. I'm thinking about putting socks on there. I saw someone that does that. They put socks oh, on the wow. toilet, right? Oh, right? Oh, man. You so, might as well live in like, bro, like, bro, I'm sorry. You, uh, you, might be, you might as well be living in Oregon in an airstream. <laughs> <laughs> socks on your fucking toilet, bro. What? But she hasn't, but she said that. So it's been going on for like a year. And I'm like, why don't you get a toilet seat? Uh, I don't know. I haven't even looked into it. So now... Like recently, she sits on and she says that. I told Sadie, I'm like, I think she wants us to get the toilet seat warmer. And she's very odd. Like, we have money. We're not like struggling financially. She can go get a toilet seat warmer, but somehow it's not seen as like a gift thing, I guess. I already got it. It costs like 113 bucks. Comes with a little plug, goes right into the outlet. I don't know, man. This thing sounds exciting, actually. Uh, I mean, this is yours, not... yours warm up. Yeah, mine warms up. I I have a uh, the the house came with a toilet, 
one of those toilets that, you know, opens up automatically, it flushes automatically, it, it, it cleans your asshole, the whole thing. It's just, uh, it's just How do you like feel a, about the warmth? Like, is it nice? Do you notice it? You're like, damn, you know, I, I don't think I could ever go back to a non-warm toilet. What'd you take? It's such a luxury that every time I sit down on a toilet that doesn't have it, yeah, I'm I'm upset. <laughs> it's almost like torture, right? <laughs> oh God, no, it's All right, nice. Good. It, it, it's I'm an, getting it's excited. A, no, it's 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 a nice. It's a nice. I'm not knocking the gift. I'm just I saying. No, bro, I'm at, knocking at, it. <laughs> yeah, at Christmas <sighs> time. I don't know. I I I kind of like the one gift splash than the. I, I've done the separate gifts. I've done the multiple gifts. They're cool, you know, some knickknacks and whatnot. Oh, remember when you were saying you liked that? And, and, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, they're I got they're a fun. Pair of, sh- pair of shades. I got. A, but here's the thing: when you get someone just the one gift, and they get you a bunch of gifts. Then every time I'm opening up another gift that she got me, I got to bring up the gift I got her. Like, I'm opening it going, so you really like that necklace, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was thinking about Because <laughs> she's just sitting there sipping a coffee for the next 45 minutes. I'm opening it up. <laughs> she fills my stocking. Her stocking, I got nothing. You know, so this year, I got to put stuff in there, too, you know? Oh, shit. I got to get on this now. That, yeah, I forgot I about the stock. I always forget about what? the stocking. I got, I got another question for you, too, because last week, we went to this cute little town outside of Buffalo called East Aurora. It's got, like, the quintessential small town out of a movie, you know, with the drugstore still and everyone's Christmas shopping. And I got my coffee with the lid. And this goes, it's store to store. Some are cool and some aren't. What's your take on as an adult when you go into a store and they hit you with the, uh, no outside beverages, no outside beverages. Like, no outside. Like, they want they want me to take my coffee and leave it outside on a bench so somebody Why? can dip fentanyl in it. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because... I mean, that's the thing, too. Because you know, the, the products, like, I want to... I'm giving them a look, like... Look at me, lady. Do I look like I, I, I spill coffee? Look at me. Yeah. You know? And by the I, way, I, if I spill yeah. it on something, I'll, I'll fucking buy it. I'll buy that, and I'll buy a dry one that I didn't spill it on. <laughs> you know? I don't like that move, uh, and I think it should be based on, like you said, if the person looks like they spill. Yeah. Right? Like I agree. Like, but I look then, at you. I look at you. Come into my business with your coffee, right? I go, oh, this guy's a veteran. Exactly. The, just the way the way he handles the coffee, you could tell the way someone moves around with liquid if they're proficient in keeping it in the cup. Yeah. Yeah. I, Some and, people and I, they... go, I go by outfit too. I was wearing an overcoat. You know what I mean? I had a scarf on, nice pair of, of leather gloves. I could have been doing a Javalia commercial. <laughs> and you'll worry about me doing a drip in here? Come on. <laughs> yeah. You're the type of guy that could hold his coffee. By the way, what what hand do you hold your coffee in? Oh, when you go right, I hold it in my right hand. But what I like to do is when I'm not drinking it, I, I almost put my hand over the oh, whole thing. Oh, bro, like that's this. a veteran move. And, the, I, the, and it's the, dangling all the oh, way down oh, by oh. the head. Oh, God. You right. put it down by your knee? Yeah, well, but yeah, like this, right? Like, yeah, just like right down here. You know? Yeah, just right by the knee. around. No, I won't. And I just come up in a boom and I go to bop. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Jesus. I'm adding to the ambiance of your store by <laughs> sipping my coffee as I stroll through it, lady. Come on. Looking at the tchotchke shit in here. Oh, the other thing I don't God. like is the don't touch rule. Don't oh, touch. yeah. I don't, what, what is that? What is that? Is like, this kindergarten. Many... Is this kindergarten? You got a fucking store. I might buy it. I'm touching it, right? I go a step further on that one. You ever get this sign? You break it, you buy it? Oh. You ever get that yeah, I've gotten that. That that'll make me leave your store. I see that. I, I walk away. I, I walk love out, it, bro. I love it. I love it. That's what you get. What are you talking to? Who are you talking to? What's that thing? <laughs> that who's that sign? You know, it's, it's yeah. I don't like that either. 
But I don't like were... to in this small town. I'm not into this because it was um, <clears throat> a lot of kids were home. It was the Thanksgiving weekend, actually. So a lot of kids were home from college, and you could see they were there with their parents walking the streets, and everyone's got the family dog. Dad stays outside the store with the dog jerking them all over. And um, I understand why the dog has to go Christmas shopping in town. I, I don't understand that. Bring the dog, it, Dad. I miss the dog. Yeah, I'm not into Take that the dog either. Back you to Syracuse with you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You would find that though, a lot of people who have pets will 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 be uh, in disagreement of that statement because they believe that the pet should go everywhere, which I'm not really fond of, um, especially in stores. I mean, yeah. Uh, but getting back to your coffee hold, yeah, yeah, you remind me of a type of guy that is able to hold his coffee, right, and then shop for clothes with the loose hand, right. So you got the coffee in one hand, but you're thumbing through like the rack, right, yeah. and you'll have the ability to take it off the rack and like like flip it, and maybe even, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then maybe even like. <laughs> It was yeah. something for Jackie. Just go over to Jackie and 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 give her a look on, like, to see how she would look in it, all mm -hmm. while having that coffee just dangle off your dangle. Uh, your your uh, your side hip. Absolutely, man. I mean, I I can't tell you how many times walking the city streets when I lived in Manhattan, where I'd be walking with my coffee. And I'm trying to decide if I don't want any more of it and if I should throw it in one of the garbage cans when I get to the corner. And then, like, so many times, like, I don't toss it. And then as I'm walking to the next corner, I'm like, God, I'm so glad I didn't toss you. Like, because I want that <laughs> extra sip. And it go, it's just it's the weirdest thing with coffee, bro. I don't want to carry it. I don't want it all the time. But sometimes I just want one nice hot sip. And there's no other way to get that unless you're carrying it with you, man. You got that yeah. right, man. So, um, so listen. This is our this is our last Christmas episode. Christmas goodbye. This is the Christmas goodbye, right? Yeah. The Christmas goodbye. Um, want to wish everybody out there a very merry Christmas. It's been one hell of a year with you guys. Lots, lots gone on this year. Lots gone on this year. Yeah. And um. Yeah, I got, I got, man, I got so much. I got, to, I have to save it for the next cast, bro. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I hear you, bro. We got, listen, all this means is Christmas will pass between this one and the next one, but we are back next week, baby. Um, what does this come out? A Monday before Christmas, I think, is when this passes. Yeah, December so. 19th, this will come out. Yeah. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Have Christmas. A great year. Enjoy it. Have another great one. You got it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>